Good evening, church. Thank you for joining us for another midweek service. Again, my name is Edgar, and as always, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here to bring a message that the Lord has laid in my heart. So today was a tough one for me. In a sense where what the Lord was dealing with me as I put this message down on paper. And just so that you guys know, obedience is the title of my message today. So I know I'm not the only one that has trouble with that. <laughs> I think this is one of the toughest things I know in my life. One of the hardest things that I had to deal with. I don't know about you guys, <clears throat> but for, for my life it was. And I know that it changed a lot of things, how I view things, how I see things now that I'm walking with the Lord. What about in your lives? How has obedience changed things in your life? Now that you have the Lord in your life. Are we always obedient to his word? It's a tough one, right? <laughs> Let me start off with the opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again, Lord, for allowing me to be here, Lord, to bring a message forth to your people, Lord. I pray that this message doesn't fall on deaf ears, Lord, that you capture those who you want to capture, Lord, that this message reaches those who you want to reach. And I thank you again for using me as your mouthpiece, Lord, to bring forth this message to your people, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, and I pray that you guide my words, Lord. In your mighty name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. So my first scripture is in Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 22 through 23. Again, that's 1 Samuel 15, 22 through 23. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen. Obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. I mean, that's just very simple right there, right? Obedience to the Lord's words is worth more than any sacrifice you can make to him. Anything that you can do obedience is better than anything that we can offer the Lord and again I know that obedience was a tough one for me because like many of us I was a bad kid I never listened you can ask my mom <laughs> she'll tell you everything that happened to me in my younger days growing up happened because I was disobedient. Disobedience got me into a lot of situations in life where I shouldn't have been. I was one of those hard-headed kids, knucklehead, that just never listened. And like my mom would always say, you don't listen to things happen to you. That's when you want to listen, after the things have happened to you. And boy, she was right. I didn't listen until after I got that knock on my head. So after I bumped myself, after I got hurt. But like many of us, like we want things our way. I've always wanted to do things my way. Because I, 
before Christ, I thought my way was the best way for myself. I saw life as I own my life. Nobody's going to dictate what I do with my life. Right? And I'm sure some of you can relate. Growing up in the hood, growing up tough childhood, just growing up in an environment that made you grow up in a different light, in a different way. You know, you can't, you couldn't always be that good kid. You couldn't be the one to always follow the rules. You know? But now, as you get older, as we get older, we know better. We know that with Christ in our lives, guiding our steps, how much better has life been? When we listen to his voice, when we're obedient to his word, we don't have to go through life in pain and wondering what's gonna happen next because I'm not listening or because I'm not in commune with the Lord. I mean, how many times have we made decisions on our own? Not small decisions, but life altering decisions. Like buying a new car, buying a new home, moving somewhere, talking to that one person and thinking that we can do it ourselves. And when things go wrong, that's when we decide to look for God. But we have to understand that any decision, any life decision that we make, you have to, we have to commune with him. We have to ask and listen and wait for him to give us the okay. Because when we just take off and do what we want to do, guess what? That's when we fall flat on our face, come back hurt, crying, disappointed. Why? Because we chose to do it our way and didn't want to listen. Didn't want to be obedient. We didn't want to wait for him to give us instructions. For him, for, for us to just listen. We wanted to move. We know his timing is perfect. But our patience is trying. We wait, we wait. And then we're, we, I haven't heard from God. You know what? That means he wants me to do it. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. We have to be obedient. We have to listen to his voice and understand when he is talking to us. Because once we do things and they go wrong, I mean, that's just God teaching, you, teaching us a lesson because we're disobedient. And we're not going to learn until things happen to us, right? Our disobedience became a lesson that God had to teach us as a father. Because we can't do things our way. Our ways didn't work. This is why we came to him. This is why he took us into his arm, into his arms. So that we can look for him when we needed, or when we need him. When we need to seek that advice. When we need to listen to him to make that big decision in life. We were at the end of our ropes. We didn't know what else to do. This is why we came to the Lord. To seek to be fulfilled. And to be used. And this is all part of being obedient. I mean, what is it in us? 
that we feel that we have to do it our way? Is it impatience? Is it what? It's hard. It's hard to sit and wait sometimes because you want to do it now. You want it right now. And just like as life has taught us that we can do things and get things now when we want them, right? But not when the Lord is telling us to wait. Be still and wait. But sometimes I'm just like that. That's why I said in the beginning, like this message was a little tough for me. So I love my Lord. But <laughs> I get in my own head sometimes too. Where I want to do things. I'll talk to my wife. Hey, let's do this. This is the that. And she hesitates. And I know it's Wait. But I'm like, ah, let's just go do it anyway. Ah, let's go do this anyway. And then I realize, ooh, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Maybe that wasn't the time for us to make this move. Or we should have waited a little longer before we took this on. And <laughs> I mean, even till not right now, as I bring this to you, I'm just reminded of my disobedience and how this hits me in a different way. Like, oh boy. I know better. Why did I do what I do? Because I'm stubborn. Ask my wife, she'll tell you. I'm stubborn, but that's how he made me. But I can't put the blame on him because I continue to be stubborn, even to this day. But now I do understand better more that just sitting here listening to his voice listening for instruction is the best thing i can do and offer my lord so that he can direct me in the, in the direction that i need to go to sit here and listen to him so that he can give me a message to bring forth the obedience that I have to have when I'm around certain people so that I don't fall into the old things of this world, right? Which brings me to my second scripture, Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. Again, that's Deuteronomy 28, 1 and two, if you fulfill, if you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully keep all his commandments that I am giving you today, the Lord, your God will set you high above all of the, the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord, your God. Amen. Obedience is key so that we can have favor with the Lord. I mean, we'll be set on high for the world to see. Well, maybe not the whole world, but we'll be highly favored. We'll be favored in our jobs, favored in our finances, uh, favored in our health and our families 
in whatever situation that we're in, as long as we're obedient, he will set us on high. For those who doubt him, we can be that proof like, here we are. Why are we up here? Because the Lord placed me here for everyone to see his work, for everyone to see what he can do for our lives. We just have to be obedient and listen. Be still. And listen. This grows patience in all of us. This creates less turmoil in our lives. We can, we can live more peaceful, happier lives when we listen. And again, that's a hard lesson for a lot of us. In verse 2, you will experience all these blessings. I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. But again, why is it so hard to stay obedient to God? Why? Sometimes we have to understand what is moving us. Because the things of this world are always going to be there to tempt us. Are always going to be there to nudge us in that direction. You can do this. You can do that. You don't have to wait for anything. You can do it now. We all know that's a lie. We all know that this world lies to us up and down, telling us what we need to believe. But it's not like that. And this is why we have to stay guarded. This is why we have to stay armored up. Because the things of this world will come and attack and Keep firing their darts, those fiery darts, those arrows towards us that we need to protect ourselves from. Those mind games that the enemy loves to play on us. The things that he does to our families to push us. The things that he does to us in our health. The things that he does in our jobs. Is to trip us up. So we have to stay guarded. Put on your armor. Stay ready for that fight. Stay obedient to what the word says. And that enemy will flee. And your blessings will come. The Lord said it himself. Obedience. Obedience. Because we fall into a state of rebelliousness sometimes. Where for no reason we just want to rebel. We want to do it our way. Everything. Everything has to be done our way. If it's not my way, I don't want it. Right? We can all say we've been there. I know I'm not the only one. But if I am, well, shame on me, right? <laughs> but I'm sure all of your parents out there would love for your kids to have the same obedience. You did with them too, right? Grandma's like, oh, she was more, she's as obedient as you are when you were her age. The ouch. <laughs> obedient heart 
This is what the Lord is longing for from us. He can make life easier for us if we just obey. Listen to his word. Which brings me to my next scripture. That's 2 Corinthians 9.13. Again, that's 2 Corinthians 9.13. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God for your generosity to them. And all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. Amen. As a result of your obedience, many have been reached. Many have been led to salvation. A lot of good, a lot of people now know the good news. This is because of you, those who are in ministry. Everything you guys do, you reach one, they reach somebody. And we keep spreading the good news and that way through this platform on YouTube. We continue to spread the good news to the Lord because of our obedience. Because of what he's asked of us, we do. We answer the calling that he's given to us. Right? And we have to continue to reach those people out there. Like I said last time, we can't keep our mouth shut. Not anymore. The time is getting too close for anybody to be left behind here, to be tormented. We need to make sure we share the good news. Share salvation. Share salvation with as many people as we can. So when the time comes, we can all rejoice together. Being obedient doesn't mean you give up your life. It means you walk life with a higher purpose now. A purpose in Christ. The walking in obedience comes when you get to meet the Lord in a personal level. Now, let that sink in for a minute. The walking in obedience comes when you get to meet the Lord in a personal level. That means outside of church, outside of everything else, where it's just that time between you and the Lord. And that, my friend, is a personal connection. When you hear his voice, when he talks to you, and he guides you. When he shows you who he is. When he touches your heart. When it was my turn, when I first met the Lord. Yes, I was running a hundred miles an hour as a new convert. And like a lot of people, I slowed down. But he found a way to grab me and tell me, I don't need you to run a hundred miles an hour. This isn't a sprint. 
This is a marathon. But throughout that walk, I need you to reach as many people as possible. In your walk with me, I'm going to put you in a position for you to reach as many people as possible. And here I am in front of you guys. He told me that this is where I would be. And in my obedience, here I am. So however you do to have your personal time with the Lord, whether it be through prayer, worship, meditating, make time. Make time to get that personal connection, to listen to his word, to be obedient to what he has for you. Because what he has for me is not the same thing that he has for somebody else. We all have different paths that we walk, that he sets us on. Our races are all the same, but different. We're called to reach souls, but in different ways. He is the one we look for right when we're sad, when we need comfort. We seek him for those things because we know that he is the one that can fill that empty void that we felt before we came to him. And that's what we want other people to experience. That fulfillment that only God can give them. So all those out there that are in ministry, thank you for being obedient, for reaching people out there, those who don't know the Lord, reaching the lost, reaching the backsliders. This is something that we have to continue to do. Amen. And for those of you out there, who don't know the Lord and want to get to know him, to build that relationship with him. Let me lead you in a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior, guide my life and help me do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, welcome to the family. Brother and sister, we hope to, this message has blessed you. Good night.